Hello, I'm Dave Ortega from Somerville Media Center, and I'm happy to be bringing together businesses and uh, our, our wonderful Main Streets organizations uh, for another in our series of business updates uh, to provide a chance for business owners uh, and other stakeholders to talk about what is going on right now with our business uh, interruption and with business not as usual. Um, so with me today in in the in the virtual studio here <laughs> are uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Atwood from East Somerville Main Streets. Welcome to you, Jennifer. Thank you for having me here today, Dave. Of course. And Jessica Eschleman from Union Square Main Streets. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you for having us back, Dave. Of course. Um, and the businesses today are uh, Durbrow Performance Training in East Somerville, and we're joined with Callie Durbrow. Welcome to you, Callie. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me, Dave. Excited to be here. Welcome. And also joining us from Union Square is uh, Tony Lopresti from Clementine or Clementine Salon. <laughs> How are you, Tony? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, so let's start off with Callie and Tony. Um, maybe provide uh, for us a snapshot of what the past year has been like for your business. Uh, there's been ups and downs. We're, we're coming up very, very quickly on one year of this business interruption due to COVID. Um, maybe we'll start with Tony. Um, you know, what is, what's been the past year for you? Yeah, so I think it's, you know, it's changed. It's ebbed and flowed a bit. You know, that initial three month shutdown was uh, bonkers <laughs> and very, um, you know, we all had to pivot in a very, you know, crucial way. And this is a, you know, personal service industry that we don't have any income if we don't perform those services. So, you know, pivoting to the digital world and what that's like and offering gift certificates and stuff. Um, you know, and then shortly that, you know, three months went a lot quicker than anticipated and we were able to open and work with the city to reopen and um, worked very hard on, you know, just safety protocols and sanitization. Um, and luckily we're an industry that is taught that from the get-go. So, you know, we were able to, to open our doors, but I think that it's, you know, it's like everyone, it's scary and it's, it's, uncharted waters for us. So, um, you know, now that it's been almost a year, it very quickly kind of turned into old hat. It felt like we've always been operating like this and we're, you know, we're in Somerville, which is a very super lucky place to be because of the clientele and the community that um, just cooperated <laughs> immediately and was, you know, very compassionate and very supportive and, um, you know, almost, like, you know, want, wanting to do the most, what, how can we help you? What else can we do? And, you know, basically just, you know, follow our protocols, follow our, you know, let us operate and, you know, um, you know, so we've been very, very lucky to be able to operate safely and obviously at a lower, you know, capacity, it's not, you know, it's not going to be, you know, the, the most profitable year <laughs> that we've ever had, but I think that we're, we're super lucky to be, you know, surviving. Um, I would say, you know, I want to brink on thriving, but we're, you know, we're, we're, we're almost, you know, we're, we're here, we're here and we're, we're making it work. And it's, you know, it's been uh, bittersweet and, you know, we've been able to find silver linings and uh, you know, the relationships that we have with, with our community and the clients that come in. And I am so grateful to be able to interact and have the socialization that I know a lot of people aren't. So I know that my, my team is grateful for that and have been able to, um, you know, really go above and beyond. And I'm super grateful for them as well, because I've gotten, you know, no pushback on any kind of, you know, pivoting of safety protocols and stuff and all the, the stuff that we have to do, you know, a lot of it was just bringing it out into the forefront so people could view it. A lot of it was stuff we were doing anyway. So, um, but it's weird. It's a, it's a weird, you know, life we're living, but we're, you know, we're a little bit used to it now and it feels like it kind of always was that way. And, you know, kind of stinks to work in masks all day, but it, you know, the, the, benefits are outweighing, you know, the, the bad stuff. So lucky. Oh, thank, thank you. Um, and then moving to, uh, to Callie with that same question, um, you know, you have a, a, a performance, uh, a gym 
uh, type business. Uh, why don't you let us know what the past year has been like with how you've had to, to pivot and where you are now? Yeah, this past year, uh, we've pivoted multiple times. Um, when we got the word for a shutdown, we pretty much immediately moved all of our classes to Zoom, um, which everybody was really unsure about how to do it, but we figured it out. Um, so we ended up doing that for um, three or four months. So we moved, we started doing outdoor workouts in June. We were lucky enough that we have a parking lot right next to our gym. so we were able to um, work out outside. People were very spaced out and that was amazing. And once we were able to reopen, we actually stayed outside a little bit longer just because the weather was nice. Um, and then we kind of did our third pivot in um, right after Thanksgiving when we moved back inside to our studio. So we really had multiple things moving along, but um, similar to Tony, we just, you know, we, our clients were so respect, respectful and receptive to all the new protocols and everybody was just work out, um, whether that was in their home or outside. And I think it really provided, you know, for us as the coaches and just um, having that socialization as well. So for my staff and myself being able to interact still, even though we were closed, like that was just an amazing thing. So our clients were with us the whole time. They really just like whatever came along, they were happy to be able to still work out and have that stress relief. Um, so for us, we were really lucky that we were able to operate online when the studios were shut down. That's great. Uh, that's great to hear that you that you've both been able to pivot and that you've had a really positive response from the um, from the community as well. Um, so, in terms of like how you would rate the the state's performance on business advocacy and resources, um, you know, m m how would how would you rate that, and how would you rate the city uh, as well on the, on those measures? Uh, maybe start with um, Cali this time. Yeah, I would say, um, well, we were able to get a grant from the state, which was really, really helpful for us. Um, one of the biggest things for me was being able to maintain all of my staff and keep them on payroll. So um, we were able to get help with that, which was, that was really a thing that I wanted to make sure I was able to allow them to keep working. So the grant was super helpful from the state. Um, I also think that the resources um, from the state, just in terms of you know, here's the numbers that you can have. And here's, you know, everything was really um, outlined well on the website in terms of, okay, if, if, you know, if I had a question, a client asked me, hey, if I'm going away, like, how long do I quarantine, like things like that, where the, I felt the resources were, were quite good on the website. Um, and for the city as well, we got, uh, once we adopted our safety plan and our protocols, they got right back to me. Um, with how many people I could have in my space and how I could operate my outdoor workouts. Um, so yeah, I felt very supported on both levels. Very nice. And uh, Tony, same question. Yeah, um, I think originally being, um, you know, a touch-based service and being in phase one of reopening was pretty scary originally. And I think that the government and the state was, um, you know, they put out their list of protocols and stuff and it was a little vague. And I think that the city was super helpful in um, implementing a working group that would basically, um, you know, I was able to sit in with a, a group of 14 other salon owners to really, um, you know, narrow down exactly what each of the, the protocols meant and what, you know, we were doing personally and have a, you know, categorized plan of exactly the steps that we were taking. So that was super helpful um, that the mayor and um, I wanted Tom Galagani, I believe his name was, was sat with us all to really, you know, it was, you know, days of Zoom meetings and stuff. And, but it was really nice to have that support um, because that, you know, as a business owner, it was very like, okay, well, we just have to do the most. And the city supporting that, I think, was 
um, made us feel a lot safer because it did feel a bit like, oh my gosh, are we just getting thrown into the lion's den? Like, I'm not sure what's, you know, what, what happens. We didn't have a lot of information back in May of last year. So um, being able to have that group was like a super support and have the other business owners to have that support as well, be able to communicate with each other. Um, and to know that Somerville was really like, okay, hold the bus. What are we actually doing? Like, it's not just okay, cool, open, go ahead. You know, I think that that can be really scary as a business owner and to not get, you know, that super, super specific um, and a little bit of your own, like, well, these are my protocols versus my protocols, you know, having that group um, to really specify what we were doing and to be able to then clarify that stuff to our clients, to our guests and say like, you know, the city approved plan is this and this is why we're doing it. And this is exactly what we're doing. Um, so I think that the support, from that end was awesome. And we were also able to get the, you know, payroll protection program um, as well as, you know, I got constant emails from, you know, Jessica sending out the Union Square Business um, Associations, the grants that were available and like, you know, the grants that were specifically available to like, you know, marginalized groups. And uh, I think that that was just really awesome. And we got that information uh, super often, <laughs> which I, you know, was able to take advantage of the payroll protection and, you know, chose to, you know, you know, not take certain things so that they were available for other people. Um, but they were, they were there. They were, you know, I felt, I, I felt really supported through, through it. Well, that's great. And can you, you know, you touched on this, but can you um, highlight, you know, a member of the community or, or another nonprofit or, or a city councilor or maybe a customer, you know, anybody that's really, you know, come through for you? Um, well, for me personally, I think that having uh, Jessica and Zach Baum from Bow Market were um, really crucial in just getting information that I maybe wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, or I guess just like that little community of like, oh, hey, you're not the only one feeling this way. Hey, we have this, you know, outline of things that other people are also concerned with. And getting that information out made it feel so much less lonely, which I think as a small business owner, you can kind of feel pretty lonely, like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Nobody else is in the same boat. When in actuality, people are there literally outlining that you're not alone, <laughs> that everybody's feeling the same way. And here's a resource for you to, you know, go out and, and, and share that you're not alone and, and maybe get help. <laughs> Yeah, and Callie, same same question. Do you want to highlight uh, anybody that that's really come through at this time? Yeah, I would uh, totally agree. I think Jen, thank you for sending the emails for East Somerville. It was the same thing. It was really um, very timely. Every week we would get updates on um, you know resources that were becoming available when they were going to be available. Um, just uh, specific grants for businesses that had been shut down longer, like gyms and restaurants. So that was super helpful. Um, and, you know, just from the community, just like our clients, really, they stuck, stuck by us and were able to, um, you know, we were able to keep going because they supported us and wanted us to be there when this is over. That's great. Um, and then to, to open up the conversation a little more, um, to, to Jen and Jessica, um, you know, you just, as we've done these business updates and as businesses have really talked about the advocacy work that you've done on their, on their behalf, um, you know, it, it's, it, it would be interesting to know like what businesses are coming to you with now and what their concerns are now, as opposed to what we were talking about a year ago when this first started. <laughs> um, so maybe uh, Jennifer, start us off with, with that. Thanks. Um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely different now um, because we're coming like slowly coming out of the winter. And so what I'm hearing a lot of is like the vaccine rollout, I think is what everyone's concerned about and what everyone's thinking about, especially knowing that like business, um, business owners and their staff are kind of next up on the list to become vaccinated. So I have, I'm getting lots of questions about when and how, and I think that it's, you know, that's what it's on everyone's minds um, because that's how we get back to normal really. Um, so I would say that's number one. Um, I think that sales are continuing to be low 
um, compared to other years. So obviously businesses are still impacted by capacity limits and restraints. Um, and so it's crucial that even though as it feels like we're getting back to normal to continue to support small businesses because they are going to this we haven't seen what the long term effects of what the past closures and the capacity limits are on these small businesses so i just want to continue to um, advocate for supporting our small businesses first um, before going to Amazon or big retailers um, in particular, because it's we're not going to know what these long term effects on some of these businesses, particularly those that have had to take out loans in order to continue to get by. And when those loans come due and uh, if they aren't able to be forgiven, if they haven't been um, treated properly, then it's other effects are going to come into play that uh, will impact these small businesses. And then the last thing to kind of just shout out about what's happening right now is um, where it's, it may not feel like it today or yesterday because it's been so cold, but outdoor seating is coming and um, actually is now available. So those businesses can start taking advantage of that. So um, just looking for other opportunities to, to think about um, being able to take advantage of businesses and, those businesses that should be thinking about outdoor opportunities to create avenues for customers to still interact with them. So that includes retail and businesses and um, gyms and other businesses, just to think of, like, kind of creatively about how you can expand your business to be more open air environment. And Jessica, what concerns are businesses coming to you with? Well, I have to share, Dave, uh, it sounds like businesses in East Somerville have a lot of the same concerns as businesses in Union Square, and I would imagine throughout our city and, and beyond, vaccine is the top. Um, how can I keep my staff safe? When can I get my staff um, vaccinated? When is there an opportunity to do that within my neighborhood? Is that something that's possible? Since we know that small owner-operated businesses in particular often have to close for medical appointments, so... Um, one thing Union Square Main Streets is advocating for is opening up neighborhood or central business district based vaccine sites so that our frontline workers in the brick and mortar businesses across all types, hospitality, restaurants, salons, um, exercise facilities and beyond um, can go a block or two down the road rather than down to Gillette Stadium, for example. The other concern I'm hearing about vaccines is how do we keep our precautions up appropriately as more vaccines happen? We know that there's gonna be a continued need for um, precaution and wearing masks even after you've been vaccinated as the science becomes more clear on um, the implications of those vaccinations, particularly in terms of transitions, I'm sorry, transmission. The other thing I'm hearing a lot of questions about is how, is there a data set that we can look at to anticipate um, further rolling back of the restrictions that we're under? So here in Somerville, we're still at 25% capacity. Um, and you know, how do we predict when, when the city may feel comfortable with us rolling that or, or increasing that rather? Um, and data impacting other business decisions as well. And we're very pleased that Mayor Curtitoni is hosting a business town hall on this Thursday with a particular focus of diving into data. So I'm very hopeful about uh, the learnings that we'll all take as we walk um, out of that meeting. I really want to take one more moment to also hold up Jen's point of keep small strong. Um, she said it so beautifully, things are improving. There's hope on the horizon, but your viewers, Dave, are the people who are going to keep our local businesses strong. And so um, I'm going to join Jen and calling everybody to action um, and, and not only to, to shop local, but if you can go right to your businesses and, and do businesses directly with them. We know delivery fees um, can definitely cut into profits. So it's something when folks are at home saying, what can I do to contribute? Um, definitely shopping local and shopping directly with our, our businesses is the gold standard. And um, Jessica, what are the what are the biggest challenges um, right now? And I'll open that question up for 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 everybody. Um, you know, you you did mention you know the um, the concerns that businesses are coming. Is that different from from the challenges that are in place right now? Um, or did did you already answer that question? <laughs> I think I rolled them in together um, because businesses do come to us with their challenges. Um, 
certainly anybody who's not set up for this outdoor commerce that Jen was referring to earlier, they have a challenge in front of them. Um, we know that Tony and Callie have been through the process of using our city system called CitizenServe, um, but certainly if that's not a tool, it's a technology tool that the city uses to process permits and licenses, that's not a, a tool that you're familiar with, that brings a host of challenges. Um, in 2020, restaurants um, were able to come outdoors and do outdoor dining because the licensing commission was able to approve those requests and those permits. And the city needed to develop systems for our retail businesses and more of our service sector businesses to also come out into open air commerce opportunities. We're very encouraged to hear that those mechanisms are being put into place. But I know that a challenge in front of us is ensuring that as all of the businesses who have an interest of being outdoors, get outdoors and also have the support. And then I would be remiss if I did not touch on um, a challenge that I'm ever uh, thinking about, which is how do we reach the businesses we're not yet reaching? Um, it's wonderful to hear that Callie and Tony are receiving our communications um, from our Main Street programs, but whether small businesses are in a district that don't have a Main Street program or there's a business within our program area that's um, perhaps speaking another language or for some other reason not plugged into our, our support systems, I'm always thinking about how can we reach all of the businesses in our community. Uh, I would say um, one challenge that we hadn't spoke about is um, one thing that I've been on my mind for some time is a lot of, there's a lot of distrust in certain communities of financial institutions and loan programs. And so there's quite a few businesses that I know of in my district, and I'm sure in Jess's and other parts of the city that haven't taken advantage of resources that exist currently. Um, or have come up, become available just because there's this distrust this and this, um, this like the word loan, <laughs> I think is uh, scary for some of these businesses and not understanding or feeling comfortable with, um, with the forgiveness process that they've held off on applying to like PPP, for example, or um, some of the city uh, relief funding or the state relief funding that had become available. Um, and so I, I think that's a challenge um, that, I, that really hasn't been tackled like 100% yet. At, um, I think that we're facing is just that um, there are businesses that just haven't taken advantage of those resources that they should, um, unfortunately. Yeah, and uh, Callie or Tony, do you have anything to add to that uh, as far as like um, challenges for, for you both? Um, I think that one of one of the challenges that, you know, we see that causes ebbs and flows is often not necessarily from, you know, the small level, but even just the effects that national things have on how people are patronizing businesses and how those you know, emotions and, and factors can really um, cause the smaller businesses slower periods. And I think that, you know, like you guys were talking about with vaccine rollouts and, you know, from my personal perspective, being in a personal service industry and clients just wondering themselves, like, why aren't you guys getting vaccinated? And we're like, well, I don't know, you know? So I think that's obviously more, again, on a national federal level, um, but it does affect us as small businesses and not having, you know, the answers or feeling, you know, discouraged by it ourselves and still, you know, being in customer service and wanting to be the producers of joy. Um, it can be a challenge to um, have that all happening while we're still trying to, you know, be the advocates of self-care and shopping local and all that stuff. So. Yeah, I don't know that I have much to add. I would think I would just echo what Tony said. Yeah, just being, um, you know, I think our local community has done a great job of giving and providing resources for us as small businesses to kind of know the best direction and, and how to communicate with our clients. Um, so, yeah, I think just clients not knowing and customers maybe not knowing um, what's next and us not knowing what's next um, can definitely bring up challenges. So I think we just have to, for us, it's just been about staying on top of really communicating with our clients about why we're doing things and um, that sometimes we don't know the answers and we'll do our best. 
great. Um, and uh, Jessica and Jen, did did you want to take uh, some moments in, in our last few moments of, of the program here to kind of highlight uh, some upcoming programs? Uh, I know your events calendar is usually, uh, you know, places where, where people like me go to, to see what's what's happening. Um, what is there anything you want to plug? <laughs> Um, I'll hop in first, Jen, if that's all right. Um, well, as you likely know, Dave, um, there are there is still a ban on performances in Somerville, which I should have named as a challenge that businesses are coming to with to me with. Um, so I will take advantage of this opportunity to add that now. Um, Union Square Main Streets often maintains an events calendar on our website. What we've done is evolve that into featuring and highlighting primarily virtual events, but there are some activities happening in the community that are either outdoor or very small group by um, reservation. And a great example of that is Culture House um, has teamed up with Outdoor Afro and is doing an outdoor scavenger hunt in Union Square on Saturday, March 6th. So you could read about that at unionsquaremain.org uh, and find the events tab there. Um, but if folks are interested in having things delivered to the inbox, I invite your viewers to, again, go to unionsquaremain.org, sign up for our newsletter. It comes out about every two weeks. It's jam-packed with business news activities that are happening in Union Square and a, a list of um, programs and events. And uh, also ditto that for East Somerville, we have a newsletter. You can find out about events and programs that are happening each month. And as of March, uh, we're gonna actually be starting up our market again um, at the end of this month. So March 28th, we'll be back at Dino's Pasta parking lot with a market. So be on the lookout for that. And um, we are also running an appeal right now. So a donation appeal, if you wanna support our work, we've been on the ground helping local businesses. And so we're always looking for donors to help continue our work. Um, and so right now, if you donate over hundred or over $50 to East Somerville Main Streets between now and March 12th, you get a free flan from La Brazo, which is fantastic because it's an off menu item now. Um, <laughs> But one last thing to maybe plug is Mud Flat's been doing a lot of great programming. Um, so to so if you're interested in ceramic arts right now, they have a mug sale on their website and they are running a date night program where you can buy like a take home kit to do some ceramic arts at home and then bring it back so they will fire it for you. So those are some other programs. Oh, and sorry, the library also has been running quite a few programs um, out of the East branch as well as the other branches. So keep an eye out on those programs. Thank you, everybody. Um, this has been really great um, for joining me on the tw first uh, business update of the year. I want to thank my guest, Callie Durbrow from Durbrow Performance Training on Garfield Street, or, or is it Garfield Ave? In, Garfield Ave <laughs> in East Somerville. Uh, Tony Lapresti from Clementine Salon in Union Square, across from Somerville, I see on my monitor here. Um, Jennifer Atwood, the Executive Director of East Somerville Main Streets, thanks once again for joining me. And Jessica Eschleman, the Executive Director of Union Square Main Streets, thank you, Jessica. Um, this has been great. Uh, the websites are available to for, for you to look into um, each of these two businesses and for you to visit Union Square Main Streets and East Somerville Main Streets and find out more about what we talked about today. Thank you, everybody.